Hi, I'm Norm Stockton. Welcome back. And uh, just wanted to, well, I'm here, first of all, with my great friend and master luthier, Michael Tobias of MTD Bass. And um, this is 535 number 252. And uh, it has been my main base since 1997 when I got it. And I was one of those people that bought and sold bases for years and years. And, uh, you know, you get the base and you, you think, oh, this is going to do everything. And about seven, six months later, you know, you kind of go, well, it does everything but this one thing, you know. And so you sell it and you get another one. And I bought and sold for years. And uh, there was a Bass player in my brother's band in Hawaii, Anthony Holyfield, and uh, football player. yeah, big guy, good guy, and um, but it had just slap tone for days, especially, and uh, just playability was off the charts, and so I ended up calling Michael um, shortly after that, and you know, embellishing upon my resume, <laughs> and. I didn't embellish too much, but uh, I did talk about, you know, hey, uh, you know, I'm really looking for a bass, um, and could you, you know, hook me up? And basically, he prescribed, based upon uh, what I was looking for, he prescribed this combination of woods, and pretty much I, I ordered this thing sight unseen. And um, been stressed over the collar for months. Yeah, I, every every couple you know days I call back. Did no, you color no, yet? No, not that color. No, 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 red, red, yeah, yeah. for sure, red. And then like two days later, <gasps> did you? <laughs> he finally prescribed blue for me, and um, and he had this piece of Myrtle Burl actually the figuring, he referred to it as embryonic, and I couldn't picture this on the phone. And uh, this was actually the days before email was really that big, so he couldn't just send me a file, but. Uh, why did you, first of all, what's the basic scoop with this base, uh, construction-wise? Uh, it's a poplar body, orangey neck, and a myrtle burl, myrtle burl top. And myrtle burl is a warm wood, but clear. It's a little harder than, well, it's harder than a lot of woods, but it's not stupidly hard like maple or ebony. Um, that, mixed with poplar, gives a warm, clear sound, very punchy. It punches first, and the growl follows right after the Wenji neck gives it a focus and a point to the note that's just phenomenal. It's a great sounding combination. So it's punchy, warm, clear, articulate, and still wooden and organic sounding. And that was basically what you were asking for. Yeah. And that's just what that combination <clears throat> still does. Very, very playable, too. Yeah. I, I can play things on this bass that I can't play on other basses, and it's, it's, it's basically effortless. Uh, and Bill, at the time, was... Bill Bartolini was doing what with the pickups again? Well, those are reversed p bass They're splits, and they have a preamp built in to each pickup. A couple of years ago, though, we took the preamp out of the pickup, where the coil form is supposed to be the same. Um, somehow, I think that the preamp not physically being in the shell made some sort of tonal difference, but I can't promise you that it did. Okay. Um, essentially, it's the same exact pickup now, but it's easier for him to build with the preamp outside the pickup in the cavity with the, with the EQ. All right. 18-volt. Yeah. And uh, what else? Uh, oh, sushi inlays, yes, nice. to go with this whole sushi motif. That's still monkey, technically. And uh, no, these are not uh, piezo pickups or any sort of a... LR bag setup. This is actually a inlay. Um, chopsticks. Yes, chopsticks. Um, a lot of people ask about the slap ramp, and um, much to Mike's chagrin, I, well, I have bony fingers, and so when I'm slapping, I get too much of my finger underneath the string if there's too much distance between the top and the string. So on all the bases that I use for slapping, I actually have a slap ramp uh, installed where it reduces the distance between the the body and the string, and I only get that much. Uh, finger underneath, and I don't get stuck. Um, do people ask you for those a lot? Uh, some do, some don't. Some people ask for more room. It's kind of weird. It just depends on how you learn to play yeah. what you're used to. Yeah, that whole thing of you know room to dig in, yeah, that's not well, me. Well, Yamaha <laughs> actually cuts this away. In yeah. Room, so you can get, like, a car under there. <laughs> but uh, this is this is the base that I used all over on uh, Pondering the Sushi. Um, 
and will be using extensively um, on the upcoming follow-up to Pondering the Sushi, as well as uh, any other project I play on for the rest of my life, I, I plan on. So, um, yeah, amazing bases, amazing bases. And people um, frequently, you know, these aren't cheap instruments. They're, you know, they're low to mid fours-ish, right? Uh, and uh, people sometimes balk at the price tag and... and um, it is a decent chunk of money, but if you compare what you pay for one of these, and you, you know, you ask your local symphony cellist what they paid for their racks, and you'll find that you know, four thousand dollars is probably not an exorbitant amount of money for an instrument that will never. Uh, that guy's an average bow. You're a cellist, by the way. That's about it. Yeah, and you know, or this strings. this instrument will never be the impediment. I will always be the weakest link in this equation. So it's a it's a pretty amazing thing and uh, I've been a huge fan of Michael Tobias basses for years and, and continue to be. So definitely check them out if you can. Thank you. Thanks Michael. Thank you.